Taking a live look at the White House and President Biden preparing for a big night. His annual State of the Union address and with the November election closing in, Biden is trying, trying to take the stage and try to win over some voters touting his accomplishments over his last four years in office. And joining us live in studio, UW political, uh, political science professor James Long is here. Professor Long, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So the president is going to focus largely on the economy and we have seen some uh, Democratic voters in uh, the primaries uh, casting, you know, uncommitted votes for uh, the president, mostly over U.S. support of Israel, lack of support of Gaza. So what do you expect to hear from the president tonight and how crucial is this to sway voters tonight? Well, I do think the president will address Gaza and I think we'll see him be uh, calling for more restraint than we've seen before and, and in particular lay out his uh, administration's plan for dealing with the uh, civilian and humanitarian crisis. But I think, you know, this is really going to be a platform for Joe Biden uh, to make the case for what he and the Democrats have planned for the next year and if they're reelected in November after that. So I think he'll also want to focus on immigration and reproductive rights and try to make a distinction between himself and, and Donald Trump and the Republicans as much as possible. Okay, and speaking of that, we have seen Nikki Haley dropping out of the Republican race. It looks like a Biden-Trump rematch in November. And Nikki Haley has pulled very well among moderate Republicans, uh, won two primaries in blue states. So um, moderate voters in swing states, I mean, they are going to probably decide this election. What are the issues most important to them? Well, I think, you know, Trump won in part in 2016 because he was able to win moderates and independents, and then they swung to Biden in 2020. And so I think they'll stay with Biden uh, if he can make the case on the economy, if he can address immigration. And I think particularly for women in, in, in more moderate voters in, in the suburbs of, of swing states, he'll want to talk about reproductive rights as well. Um, a lot of these moderate or independents, the swing back and forth, they aren't necessarily paying attention to the race right now. So I think, you know, a, a time will tell whether they, they, they continue to support Biden or whether they are divided between Biden and Trump eventually. But I think also that this is a, a constituency for Biden that he also wants to make the case that he really, this this is an election where democracy is on the ballot and that these moderate voters are going to want to continue that, that that Democratic tradition moving forward and if they swing to Trump that that, that would end. And to that point about uh, democracy being on the ballot, there has not been a more polarizing political figure than Donald Trump in a long, long time. Uh, he says without evidence that the 2020 election was rigged, that it was stolen from him, and polling showing that more than half of Republicans believe that faces 91 uh, felonies and right now, but he is using that as evidence of the witch hunt against him. So this is kind of a, a loaded question. I, I get that, but I'm going to throw it to you anyway. Um, for those that don't get it, what is the allure of Donald Trump? Well, we know from the primaries that he's won thus in this cycle that he's very appealing to white evangelicals. He has them locked up, uh, white rural voters. It was more educated voters, those with a college degree and those living in suburbs and cities that went for Nikki Haley. And so I think he really has a, a strong base of support among white evangelicals and, and rural voters. I think a lot of the time, you know, we see certain news and they don't necessarily see the other news. One thing we know from the polling is that a lot of his MAGA base don't really understand the 91 felony counts and don't really understand what, uh, you know, what the details of the cases or the allegations are. So I think that's a part of it. But I also think, you know, America has for a long time had voters that don't necessarily support uh, either party in a moderate direction or in, in, in sort of supporting institutions, but might vote, you know, for an anti-institutionalist party or a populist party that, you know, speaks to their issues or speaks to their needs or their grievances. UW Professor James Long, thank you so much. Great to have you here. And by the way, uh, Professor Long, We'll talk more about the election in the next hour, including Nikki Haley's role moving forward and how age and fitness for office will factor into this election cycle. And by the way, don't forget, you'll be able to watch the President's State of the Union address right here on Fox 13. Starts at 6 o'clock tonight and then immediately following uh, Fox 13 hosting special election coverage. We have our own Anna Kim and our Fox 13 political analysts talking about the Washington presidential primary that is upcoming, uh, local election matters and the end of the legislative session.